Okay. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to create, we're going to, um, we're going to alias a new function from a new class we haven't worked with before. So first of all, we're going to call, we're going to put in uh, game uh, action uh, game action um, aliases and functions. So, uh, game action is a class in the um, the uh, RPG objects class. We gotta turn these on. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for one called dot apply. Actually, no, we're going to be calling I think make damage. Um, let's go take a look here. So game action dot prototype dot apply. Well, let's we'll go apply first, and then we can go from there. So what this does is so game action is uh, used during battle. Any anything that would do something in battle is a game action. So guarding, retreating, attacking, using a skill, using a spell, using an item. Those are all um, game actions. So what game action does is it takes the data that you uh, that gets passed in from the battle system, the battle manager, and uses that to calculate out the damage and then apply the damage if the the attack hits to the target. And so we have uh, in in game action we have a target, which is the thing that's getting attacked, and we have uh, this dot subject, which is the thing that's doing the attacking. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to essentially uh, we're going to overload uh, alias and overload make damage value um, because we want to go into here and we want to based on the weapon that we have equipped and that we're using currently. Um, ooh. So this won't work for dual weapons then. Um, because there's uh, one of the problems with this is that there's no way to tell what's being used to attack with if you're doing a regular attack. Because you're when you do a normal attack, you're using a normal attack skill. You're not attacking with a weapon. Um, the weapon damage, the weapon attack power is taken into consideration from the damage formula on the skill. So if you're if you have a multi weapon like a dual will, if you're dual wielding. Um, there's no way to say, uh, no way to go in and say, okay, this is the weapon that's being currently used. We'll have to add in some extra stuff to make that happen um, in other places that we can, so we can access it. Um, but for now, we're not going to worry about that. So um, this won't work for dual wielding at the moment. It, there's, you know, to make it work for dual wielding wouldn't be that hard. Essentially, what you would do is you would go into the game actor, and when you're doing an attack, you would. Um, uh, look at the weapon being used. I think when you when you have a when you're dual wielding, um, there's a way to find out which weapon's being used in that case. I'm doing it for my weapon plugin. Um, at least I think I'm handling dual weapons that way. I have to go look, but there's a way to do it. It's maybe a little bit complex, but it's not too it's not impossible to do. Um, so we're going to essentially alias this function now. Uh, so that's this here. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna be lazy. We're gonna copy this. Um, you can see it takes two values, critical and target. Um, so what we want to do is we want to let this process, and then we want to take the return value and do our stuff to it. So we're gonna uh, essentially alias it, call the alias at the beginning of the function. We're gonna write, and then we're gonna modify the return value we get, um, and then return that value to where the original call came from. So, um, their uh, tutorial plugin. Oh, turn these off. Um, weapon bonuses underscore uh, game action underscore uh, make damage value equals and then equals function. Uh, target and critical. Okay, so uh, let value equal our thing up here. Dot apply. 
this target and critical. Now, um, if uh, weapon bonus params dot is system enabled, so if the system is enabled, we continue. And we're gonna we're actually gonna take and uh, remember because we need to have the we need to get the original value right so we can't modify value. So we're gonna store a new value. I think here equals value uh, a new uh, value uh, thing here. Now you might be saying, "Why don't we just make it equal value?" Well, if you do that, you're gonna create a reference, and what's gonna happen is that when you change new value, you're gonna change value. So instead, what we need to do is make new value be its own thing, and then just use value in an in a equation to add and do stuff with. That way there's no reference to it being saved. Um, so, if the system is enabled, uh, next thing we need to do is uh, we need to, since this is part of game action, we can get the subject. So, um, first we're going to check to make sure subject is sent. So, if this dot subject, subject is a uh, function. And I believe that returns the game actor. So we're going to say uh, let game actor equal this dot subject, just so we can get it into a variable that makes more sense. Um, oh, and then also what we need to do is and um, this dot subject uh, dot constructor. So what we're doing here is we want to make sure that the subject that we're looking at is a, is a character, one of your party members, because a subject can also be an enemy if the enemy is attacking you. So we only want this to apply to our party members. So only go into here if the system is on and if the subject is not null and if the subject is a game actor. Um, next, uh, we, st we store that in game actor and then what we're going to do now is, is we're going to get the weapon ID. Um, unless you change around the, um, actually I don't even know if you can change around the slot order. I think you can if you have like Yanfly's um, equipment core, you might be able to change the slot order around. Um, but pretty much the default way it happens is that the first uh, equipped item is your weapon. And then you have a shield or another weapon and then the, like the armor, helmet, and then accessories or whatever. Uh, so the first element should always be a weapon. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to say let weapon ID equal game actor dot get equips. Um, I think it's get equips. Let me go check. Uh, so this is also inside of RPG objects uh, in the game actor function. So game actor dot prototype dot Maybe it's just equips. Oh, it's just equips. Okay, it's just equips. Um, or no. Yes, maybe so. Um, underscore equips, underscore equips, that's what we want. Uh, we need to break um, encapsulation for this because, you know, Dejusa did not create encapsulation within this at all, so uh, you have to do this sometimes. So get equips, so that's going to be a list of IDs. Um, and then we want to essentially take the first one, which is going to be our weapon ID. Um, next, we need to see, uh, we need to get the data from the plugin for that. So, um, what we do is we say, uh, let's weapon plugin data. So, whenever I'm getting data from my plugin from a database, um, no tag, the no tag database data, um, I always say weapon plugin data. That way I know that it's data from the plugin, not from the database. And if it's, a, if it's data from the database, I say weapon data. And that's how I differentiate the two. Um, you can you know, do whatever you want to with that, but always make sure that you can tell which one's which and don't use the same names for the same for different types of data. 
um, you will thank me later. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do um, tutorial core dot uh, plugin note uh, uh, tag data dot uh, weapon data. I believe that's what we need. Uh, I'll have to go actually to the. I'll need to go to damn GitHub because I don't have that. I got not have the ability to, since I didn't uh, push that into version one before or into working before I took that out again and made the new branch, I don't have the changes. So I'll have to like, see what I did with this. That's one of the, that's one of the drawbacks to the way I'm doing this at the moment. Um, so it is called uh, core plugin no tag data and then um, Weapon data, yeah. Okay, so we got it right. Uh, Torque plugin, note tag data, and then weapon data. Uh, filter, actually fine, because we're looking for one specific thing. So um, weapon, weapon, and so making sure we're getting rid of that null uh, element, and then where the weapon ID equals equals weapon ID. All right, so now we have our plugin data for our weapon. We're still gonna do a check on it though. Okay, so at this point now we have our data. So we have the formula, we have our type, our skill type, and we have our um, um, our actual bonus. Um, so now we need to see what skill type uh, the skill is that we're using. So. That's a good question. Oh, I had these still on, so that looks kind of weird, probably. I have to turn this stuff off. Okay, so, um,. What I'm looking for is a way to determine what the thing is that we're doing. There should be something in here we can use to find that. Um, so is attack data skills subject skill theory. Okay, so we can call is attack. And that'll get us if it's a data skill, which means it's an attack skill. Um, normal attack or otherwise. Um, if it's not one of these, then it, we can skip this. So, is attack. So we would use um, this dot is attack. So what we could also do for an extension on this now is if it's a physical or like you could have it determine if it's a physical or magical attack using the is physical or is magical, right? One of these two. And um, if you're like only want to buff up magic spells like on a magic weapon. Um, and not the physical attacks with that weapon. You could then use it as magical on this to, to further, you know, you have like a thing on the, the plugin that would say um, um, hit type and you would put in magical or physical or both or all or something like that. And then you could do the checking based on those to say, okay, we can actually do this here, but we're not going to put that in. That's an example of how much further you can take this if you wanted to though. Um, so, we, so if, so, in order to make it here, we've already established that the attack is hit, and we're calculating the damage. Uh, we've established that the system is on, that the subject is there, and that the subject is a game actor. Um, we have established that we have plugin data for the weapon, um, and that the 
skill that we're using, the thing that we're doing, is an attack. Um, so at this point now, what we have to do is we have to we have to um, uh, calculate out our bonus damage. So um, what we're going to do here now is is we're just going to do a, use the eval statement. So how this works is when you write an eval statement like an eval string. Um, using variables. You can use variables in the string that exist in the current context that the val is going to run in. So we can write um, value, the word value in the formula string in the database. And when we pull it into here and do the eval statement on it, it's going to pull the value, whatever value is stored in value in this variable and use it in the eval statement. So essentially what we're going to do is this. <clears throat> we're going to say um, value times um, weapon plugin data dot bonus or dot uh, actually we're gonna we're gonna pull in the um, well this is what's gonna be in the formula and then we're gonna pull in the formula using weapon uh, plugin data dot bonus formula and what we're gonna essentially do is we're gonna say new value equals uh, we're gonna round it down so math dot four. Um, so math is a class <clears throat> stores a bunch, has a bunch of different um, math based formulas, and what floor allows it to do is it essentially will round um, <clears throat> um, will round down your value. <clears throat> so um, it's greater than less than or equal to its numeric argument. So in other words, um, like if we go over to JS for the really fast, and I'll show you what this looks like. Do console.log. Oops. Math.floor. And we say um, 3.14. That should come out to um, 3. Yeah, so it rounds it down. If this is uh, 5, 4, though, it should round it up to 4. Oh, actually, does it truncate? Maybe it truncates. I guess floor truncates. Never mind. I thought it was around, uh, around. Oh no, it rounds down. Right. So it doesn't just round. Um, if you just wanted to round, you would use round, and that would round it to the nearest. I think. Yeah, but um, you have ceiling seal, which I think does up. So no matter what it is, it goes to the next one up, and floor goes to the one down. Um, so I always use floor when I'm dealing with damage calculations, so we're going down to the nearest whole number. Um, but you can use round if you want to to go to the nearest, the proper nearest number. Um, so floor, map that floor, because we're going to have a, this is, this is a um, calculation that's going to produce um, a uh, float, you know, a decimal number so let's say that let's uh let's over here and i'll show you exactly how this is going to look and how it'll work so let's say we have um let formula equals string so we're gonna have value times um bonus so we're gonna have a uh, value let's say of 10 let bonus equal 0 0.5 um, and then we're going to uh, actually it would be uh, value plus value times bonus technically it would be this um, that way because we're adding it we're gonna add it on top of the damage already have so the, the bonus calculation on top of that uh, that way that the uh, zero doesn't mean we lose damage it just means we add less damage um, and so what we do then is, is this. We'd say console.log eval um, formula. And what we should get out of this is going to be uh, 15, I believe. Yeah. So essentially we're saying value is 10, so 10 gets substituted in. So essentially this is like algebra almost, what we're doing here. You have these uh, variable names in here, and you're substituting in the value that variable contains at the time you're running the eval into the formula and that's evaluating based on the values that you've supplied so 
Um, we could also add in other, we can actually add in like uh, another thing here, like times two here, and we would get, um, what would that be? So bonus times, <clears throat> so we'd actually do these individually. So we'd do the value times bonus, which would be five, times two, which would be 10. So this should be 20, I think. Yeah. So you can add in, you know, any other kinds of things in here too. Um, or we could do, uh, I think the, I think this is the uh, exponent operator. Maybe not. Is it just one carrot? Yeah. So um, what happens here now is uh, exponents go first. So this becomes a. Actually, what is that? What would that even be? That's a good question. Uh, like 0.75 or something. Now it becomes two. But that can't be right. That also can't be right. Um, JS exponent operator. I oh, know it is double, uh, double. Uh, okay. Then what is the um, what's the carrot operator then? I don't know. So, so if you take 0 0.5 to the second power, it becomes half so essentially it's a division so if i do this there should be 25 right yeah okay that's interesting um if i make this negative it becomes negative i think that's positive So this will become like 40 or something. 50, yeah. So you can see how this works, how that works now. Um, so um, you, you use this for formulas. The main issue here is that potentially um, you could have uh, malicious code being executed this way, but since it's self-contained in a plugin um, instead of Rupture Maker um, and um, Unless the plugin developer does something nefarious, uh, this won't necessarily be an issue. Um, <clears throat> so, formula uh, valves gen generally safe to use for RPG Maker stuff. Um, so, in our case, we're just going to say uh, math at floor eval um, weapon plugin data dot uh, bonus formula. And then that'll be the new value. Um, now, if this is not an attack, we do else, and we just say, um, well, actually, here's what we do. Um, we return here. Otherwise, if we make it through all these other conditions and they're all false for some reason or another, return value. So return the default value. Um, because once we're here, once we're at this point, there's no reason to continue doing anything. We just can return from here. Um, and then this is the default return if we go through all this stuff and some all this stuff ends up like one of these ends up being false or all of them do. And we end up like in here and it's not an attack. Then we'll just send back the default value. Um, so at this point, this plugin is done, at least for here. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. We're going to um, go to uh, do our thing here. Get commit uh, am 001.2 um, plugin code. And then we're gonna go get push setup stream. Okay. 
And then we're going to uh, do the merging and whatnot to get this into version one. So let's go do that in uh, GitHub. So let's go ahead and uh, do the merge into version one here. Oh, I didn't push it up yet. Um, Oh, there's a typo. I just noticed it. Um, so we can change. We can fix this. I think it's M. RM. RM. Oh wait, it's the the wrong name than the right name. I hardly ever use this, so. Or is it the other way around? Damn, um, what is the proper way to use this? I completely have forgotten, apparently. Uh, let's see, get rm to rename branch. Um, oh, it's just, it is m, it is m. I think rm is for remote. the hell this thing has this m it says m is a valid thing um oh let's get branch m that's why god damn it there we go okay new new command for you there get branch dash m you can use it to rename your branches I don't know if I talked about that in episode three or not, but um, new command for you to know and use there. All right, so now we can actually do this. Uh, git push setup stream origin as user one dash version one. I hadn't actually pushed that up yet, so that's why it wasn't on the, wasn't in here. Push this. Because we want to push, push these into version 1 and then push those into working. Let me do the merge here. Okay. Create the requ pull request for this into version 1. Uh, merge it. Right, and then we're gonna go to version one. We're gonna merge that into working. And then we're gonna pull down uh, version one and working from uh, the remote into my local. I haven't pushed working up either, God damn it! All right, so we're on version one now. Let's do a git pull, let's update that. Now we got the, we got the, Code here, we got the code over here now. Yep, good. So we have both of those. Um, but I still need to do the working too. So get check out working. All 
Alright, there we go. And then push that. Because <clears throat> technically we've put in all the features we're going to put in for this. And then we'll need to pull down working. Let's pull. And there we go. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go to uh, over here. Let's uh, hit F5. Um, let me go grab my project that we have open over here. We're going to open up the folder for that. That's over here too. We're going to copy all these over into the plugin folder. And now we're going to configure the plugin here. So let me get this lined up. Okay. So we need to put the core plugin first because that's a require. You know, it's, the other plugin requires us now, so this has to go in first. Uh, and then we'll put in the. Button bonuses plugin. We're gonna set this to true. All right, so that's all configured. Now we have to put in the note tags. So we're just gonna make this pretty simple. Um, we're going to set up uh, the initial sword weapon for Harold. It's gonna have this in it. So um, tutorial plugin underscore weapon bonus is. Um, Hopefully you can see this with the enhanced view. Uh, the note tag box is pretty small, um, so it's kind of hard to see. So bonus capitalized is going to be um, 1.5, so we're going to do 50% uh, more damage essentially. Uh, well, technically we're doing 150 more percent more damage because it's added on to it already. So first we want to do 50% more damage. We do zero, uh, 0 0.5, but we're going to do double and a half, essentially. Um, so then bonus formula is math.floor. Um, then value plus um, value times bonus. Actually, it would be, um, well, if we wanted to keep this simple, we would actually do this. You would come into here, and in the damage calculation down here, you would um, essentially pull this out into um, a parameter called, called, uh, <clears throat> um, called bonus, like this. Because the whole thing about the formula is you want to try and keep things short so you can you know easily see what's going on there. So we'll just go ahead and do this um, in here. Um, so we come back out here. Uh, we're gonna substitute in that here, and then this to close that off. Close off that other one, and then that's done. And then. Um, Oh, the, the, the attack type, right. Um, so skill type. In this case, we're going to say any, zero. Um, so then tutorial plugin underscore weapon bonuses. And that'll close that off. Let me make sure that's what it's supposed to be. Um... A tutorial plugin two because that's be the name of the yeah so it should be two. That's just because that's what we're naming the uh, file and that's that's gonna be the name of the plugin when it comes in. Um, that's just a quirk of the way we're naming the the plugin right now. Um, <clears throat> okay, so there's that. So we didn't actually use the skill type ID. Um, let's see what we need to do for that because we do need to put that into. I forgot about that. 
Um, actually, yeah, this. So let me move this into view, proper view here. All right, so how do we check the type? Um, so if is skill is item is attack, actually we might want to have well is is attack is two. That's kind of weird though. That we have is attack and is skill. It's interesting. Um, so I guess what we could do is uh, we could use this. So this underscore item is game. This is a game item, I think, or is it? Let me see. What is the item? It might be multiple types of things. Um, oh, it is a game item. And game item can be also a skill. Okay, yeah. So, um, what we can then do is is um, uh, we can use the game item. Uh, so this dot underscore item dot underscore item ID to get the ID of the skill, and then from that we can get the type from the skill data, um, which I believe is going to be weapon type ID. So. <clears throat> Um, turn these off. So what we can do here now is with the bonus, we have this. Um, so we're gonna put in another uh, check here. So if um, weapon plugin data dot uh, dot skill type ID. Um, equals zero or. And we're actually gonna we're gonna get the skill data here real fast. Let skill data equal let skill id equal uh, this dot underscore item dot underscore item id um, data skills dot filter skill. I forget if it's ID or underscore ID. <laughs> um, let me start this up. That's not okay. It's just that. Uh, what is this? Data weapon not defined. Core plugin. Whoops. I need to fix that. <clears throat> uh, plugin manager dot plugin not a function. I'll have to fix that too. Got a couple a couple issues to fix, but it's dot id. It's id not underscore id. So that's fine. Um, so if the skill id is the same as skill id. Um, yeah, we probably should do a check to make sure. So if, what, so if the skill ID type is zero, then it's any type of skill. Otherwise, or it was not zero, <clears throat> then we want to check to see if the ID matches the, um, the, uh, skill type ID on the data. Actually, let me uh, run this again. Oh, is, um, is S type? Um, skill type is zero indexed. Okay, so it has to be negative one then, uh, not zero. Because that is zero indexed. And some things are not zero, some things are and some things are not zero indexed, which is annoying. Um, okay, then, so it's uh, skill type ID. 
S type ID. Crap. I already forgot what that was. <clears throat> I think it said S type ID. If I'm not mistaken. S type ID, yeah. So if um, weapon plugin data dot skill type ID equals equals skill data dot S type ID. So either we're, we're, it's applying to every skill or only applies to a specific type of skill. Um, then uh, we do our stuff. So that's going to put that back in there. Okay. Now we do have a couple issues to, to figure out here. Um, let me see what I'm doing wrong on this. Is it capital P? Oh, it's plugin manager parameters. That's why. Duh. And the other one was um, weapon data in the core plugin. All right. So back to configuring this thing. So, um, so our skill type is none. We want that to apply. So what I want to do is I want to have uh, Harold have um, uh, ability to oh he has heal and spark okay that's good uh, and then also the regular attack which everybody gets by default. So we're able to see that spark does normal damage and what's the damage spark deals is um, 100 damage plus magic attack times two minus M def BM def min, uh, times two. So it does at least 100 damage. So what we would expect to see is that it would do um, like probably 400 damage if the bonus is being applied. Um, so let's go back down to uh, the weapon. So skill type ID is going to be negative. It's going to be zero, so it only applies to normal attacks, not everything. And the bonus 1.5 um, value plus value times bonus on a map that floor bonus formula. Um, let's make sure that all this is correct in the core plugin for data handling. Bonus formula, bonus skill type, skill type, uh, bonus formula. Okay, looks good. So we're gonna hit OK on this. We're gonna hit save. We're gonna load this up. Um, ID of null. Oh, the the null tracking, null tracking. I forgot about that. That's why we have this for is for this purpose down here because that's going to be null, so there's no ID. Um, and that's going to be. Uh, let's see where's that going to be used at. We're going to have to increment this at. Um, Incremented after the else. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so it loaded. No errors. Now, so if we go in here and we say um, tutorial core. We'll be able to see all of our stuff in here. So we have plugins, plugins, um, dialog selector, and weapon bonuses because those should be there. Those are the ones we have configured. But if you look at plugin note tag data, uh, you'll see that we have some stuff for weapon data, um, and it's all undefined or it's all all blank. What well, shouldn't be blank? So we got a problem with the core plugin. Um, it is not finding the tag it's, I guess, here. Let's uh, put this down here and refresh. So opening tag is... Interesting, so it's actually not running. Um, did I forget to do something? Let's see. What did I forget to do? 
So we have process weapon no tags. Uh, process no tags, detect install plugins, plugin names, plugin names, plugin names. Um, data weapons, weapon, uh, note length, plugin names, tag, weapon note dot includes. Um, so, database loaded. All right, so we got a couple things we can check first of all. Let's make sure that we're getting anything here. And we'll also check to see if we're um, never loading the database or something. This is not loading. It should load right at the beginning of the, yeah, so this is going to process note tags. Oh, plugin names is empty. Interesting. Okay. So what do we got going on here? Um, don't care about this. We've already established we're getting there. Uh, so plugin is community basic. That's fine. It's fine because it's not going to be there. Plugin is now tutorial plugin tutorial plugin to core plugin. So that's this current one, which is fine. Oh, it's plugin three. That's why. Plugin three, not two. Ah, okay. Duh. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, there we go. So now it's going to return that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. However, we still have this problem, which is that the things we're putting down here are wrong. God damn it. So, true plugin three, and actually I think the note tag is wrong too. So you gotta you gotta be mindful of these kinds of things that you're doing. Let's go and change that really fast, yeah. So there's still some room for error here. Um, so just gotta be aware of what's going on with all that stuff. So we're going to turn off all these. Now if we do this and we look at our stuff. Plug in note tag data weapon. There we go. Now we have our data in here. There's our formula. We got our uh, bonus and our skill type ID. It's all there. So let's see if this actually works in game or not. Um, so for that, though, we need to put in an enemy to fight. So let's go and set up a battle really fast. Um, monster, bat. Oh, I'm not rid of undefined. Okay, what happened there um so this is interesting how did we end up breaking this um element rate of undefined target somehow we somehow we remove target with our plugin oh because we have to return no we're passing in target Unless we're getting it, unless we're getting it null here, that shouldn't be an issue. All right, it's always an adventure dealing with game action because uh, it's a really fragile class. So is hit. We can get rid of that. We don't really care about that. So this is weird, right? Because we're calling it with um, apply with this and the thing, and that should be working. But sending him in is undefined.
but they aren't undefined in our stuff here. Why are we why are we losing the values here? Let me look up um, apply really fast. Um, let's take some sort of argon the function apply this <clears throat> then array or call oh okay so actually it is an argument list. Otherwise you just call and then pass them individually. I think we have to use call. <clears throat> and then pass them individually. Otherwise, we have to pass a list with apply. It actually, okay. Let's try this. I think this is going to work. Okay, see so what happens now. Damn it, <laughs> Harold missed. Okay, well, we're not throwing errors this time, which is good. So, Harold did 44 damage. So I'm thinking at some point we're missing something in here. Yeah, it seems like we're just returning normal damage at that point. Um. Okay, so value is 48. Oh, system enabled is false. The system enabled. Wait, what? Really? Tutorial plugin weapon bonuses for him. Plugin 3. Yeah, damn. <clears throat> okay. Um, <laughs> missed that entirely. Yeah, so the way we have it set up, it's only attacks that are uh, trigger this code to run rate. Um, uh, just, you know, defending doesn't cause it to run, so that's good. Um, I'm going to assume that weapon or the item usage will cause it to run until it hits the skill check, um, which is fine. All right, so 42. True. Okay. Um, oh, it's item ID. Uh, right, so data class and item ID, because it's actually a, data, a game item. So we have to use underscore item ID on this. Whoops, I forgot about that. <clears throat> Actually, it has the, the class in there too, though, right? So we could use that to detect if it's a weapon or not. Uh, but again, I don't think we need to do that. Because the first slot should always be a weapon. Unless you really screw around with things. Okay, um, so. Attempt number like seven or something. Still, it's good. I'm getting all the kinks worked out here. <clears throat> so we are now up, up to this point um, on the checks. All 
All right, so weapon plugging data is still undefined. Oh, right, because we're not storing the ID. <clears throat> um, we got a problem there. We need to store the ID in there, too. I forgot all about that line. It's up at the, it's supposed to be up at the top um, of the uh, thing. So once we have this confirmed, it should be the, it's like an ultimate default almost. Just storing the ID like that's not going to be that big of a deal. Because we'll it will store it for every weapon, but again, it doesn't really matter. Um, actually, it's not in the right place. It should be up at the, the, the ultra default level here. That's where it should be. <clears throat> Because if you put it down there, you're essentially overriding it every time. You only want to do it once, which is there. Technically. Uh, that's a better place for it. It'll, it'll work down there, it's just that, you know, the old... Oops, I don't know what I did there. Um, I said, oh, skip files. Um, it'll just, you know, rewrite the, the value over and over again. Again, not a super huge deal, but... At the same time, it's not really how it's supposed to work. Um, so again, the 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 you know ease the easy thing versus the right thing kind of thing there. <clears throat> yeah, because this is um. So this skipped all this because it's not a not a uh, the constructor of this is a game enemy, not an actor. So I bypassed it. Whoops. Yeah. So we already that check works then. So we know it goes down to there. All right. Do we have weapon plugging data now? We do. Okay. So uh, that checks out. As attack should check out. Yep, okay, that'll be true. So now skill data is the next hurdle here. Uh, we have it, okay, good. Now, if skill type is zero and skill type data. S type ID. Why does it say undefined? Oh, we did a filter. That should be a find. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. That was my bad. Okay. So refresh. Oh, we gotta go to the debug. However, we are through almost all the checks here now. So the only thing that's left is this check here, which will pass this time, and then we'll see what happens down here. So this could be the final run to confirm that's working. So here we are. Um, so the value was what? Uh, 41. Oh, we got a nan back. Actually, oh, we had a 4.4. .4. 
Why is it a Nan Force? The bonus is... Oh, so we use the bonus, we use the formula, not. God damn it. Yeah, like I said, my brain's turned to mush. It's bonus, bonus formula. We don't need this because there's already a math four in the eval. Okay. Uh, this one should be the run. So you want to be a plugin developer. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, use a normal attack, then we're going to use magic. And the magic should be just normal damage, right? Well, normal magic damage. Like, for example, we should be able to put this thing down here, and it'll skip through this down to here. All right, its new value is 125. So that seems right, right? So if the value is 50... Um, Bonus 1.5, so the formula is value plus value times bonus. So if we actually throw this into JS Fiddle. So uh, 1.550, our value is 125, so that's right. So that is correct. Let's go ahead and uh, time that out now. I'm gonna hit again. Okay, and now we're gonna hit with um, Harold's Spark ability. So his normal damage is 68. So now if we go and change the thing to apply to all skills, right? So negative one. And we use spark, it should do a lot of damage to all the enemies. Now, if we want to really make sure this is working for magic, because magic is seem magic is a lot more variable, right? Um, <clears throat> we're going to increase the damage that we can do with this by five. So what should happen is we should see a huge increase in damage. And this is an easy way to. So when you're dealing with these kinds of values in a note tag, the easiest way to figure out if it's working is to set it to something high, because um, that will give you the easiest way to see. You know, working. <clears throat> so when I use uh, Spark, we should be doing like probably around 150 or so damage, if not more. Okay, maybe it's not working. Maybe it isn't working. Uh, turn this back on. Um, interesting. So it failed somewhere. It actually didn't, it pa didn't pass one of these checks. Maybe is attack. So 
So maybe his attack is looking for an attack skill, and the attack skill is... Ah, okay. Gotcha. So... Ah, okay. So that's why. So attack. So the attack skill is actually hard-coded value somewhere, the mighty one. Um, that's true. I forgot about that. So what we want to do then is if it, this is an attack or a skill. Um, that way we'll get either one of those two conditions there. Okay, this is going to be insane damage because we're at freaking five, right? We're, we're at five. Um, so, if we're doing 70 and 80 with, five, with the one, with normal damage, right? This is going to be like five times that. So, get ready to hold on to your butts. It's going to make 300 damage. If it works. Oh, uh, this, uh, oh, this is skill, not this is, Jesus Christ. Like I said, my brain is, uh, is, uh, telling me to fark off at the bottom. <laughs> it's too late for this shit. Um, what time is it? Yeah, it's like 1 a.m. I'm like, uh, blown through my, my hard stop, but that's fine. Because we can get this done. We're at four and a half hours. That pretty, yeah, it's pretty much expected. We're gonna get longer and longer on these as we go. Um, yeah, there we go. That works. So the plugin works. Um, so what we could do now is we could essentially set up, set up so that um, um, you only uh, you can have certain weapons that only improve uh, magic attacks. So you have them to improve physical attacks, um, and it's all down to the configuration of the weapon. No take data now, and that is how you use all the stuff we talked about. <laughs> Um, note tags, how to process them, how to use them, and um, how to actually make them in the data, um, and then um, the interactions with all this stuff with the, the make damage value and how that all works. And um, I learned that uh, I'm probably using uh, applying call the wrong way, so some stuff's probably broken from that, from my other plugins, so I'll have to look into that. Uh, but yeah, so core plugin's done. We actually have it coded now, for real. Um, I'm actually going to push up these changes. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stash the changes. So get uh, stash. So we're just going to essentially store them in memory. And then we're going to create a new branch. And then we're going to push that branch back to version 1. Because we actually made these on working. And I want to do that. Uh, so get checkout um, branch 001.3. We're going to say bug fixes. Uh, get stash pop to reload the changes and then get commits bug fix bug fixes uh, get um, push setup stream origin zero one dot three bug fixes go back to back to here we've got to push this into version one And then push that into uh, working. I 
Okay, there we go. So, yep, that's going to be it for tonight. Um, cool. So, hopefully you get an idea of how, how weapon, uh, how no tags work now, and how, you know, some of the better better ways to go through and deal with them and handle them in terms of, like, parsing them and getting the data into your plugin. Um, and hopefully you got a better idea of how the core plugins are, are utilized as well. Um, uh, and how that helps you out with, like, naming conventions and readability and stuff. We also talked about a val, so you can see how you can use just basic strings that have equations in them. Substitute in the, the names of the, the, the variables for the actual variable values in the, the scope of the eval. So we were able to like just put essentially put this into that string and then we have the values sitting in here waiting for them to be used. Um, and uh, you kind of see how we can work with all this stuff to get the values and data we need from the plugin and then from the database to then add in the functionality for like, you know, making sure that the weapon plugin data exists, making sure that the skill type is the proper skill type, or um, if we're not, if we have a negative one, so we do for any skill. Um, so yeah. Um, this is a interesting, this is an interesting plugin to work on. It took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to to finish. I was thinking probably about an hour and 15, hour and a half. Um, we spent a little extra time at the beginning talking about the, the entire project and also then going over the uh, uh, a little more detail than I thought I was going to for the core plugin. Um, yeah, cool. Works. It's good. It's plugins in the bag. Um, so episode 9 is coming up next and uh, we're probably going to be venturing into the worlds of uh, well we might go venturing into the world of scenes and windows potentially it might be a little bit too soon. I might do some more stuff with some plugin, uh, with some uh, no tag stuff first. Um, and uh, maybe I'll have to figure out um, exactly how how and what I want to do. Um, I'll have to consult my list of plugins that I wrote up a while ago if I could find the file. I seem to have lost it since we started this way back when. Um, which is unfortunate because a whole bunch of plugins, you know, essentially pre-planned out as for what they were going to be. Not all the details, but essentially it's what they were basically going to be. And um, uh, past this point, I do not remember what I was going to be doing. So, well, we'll find out. You'll be able to find out uh, next weekend or uh, the next the next episode two weeks from now. Um, yeah, cool. So, thanks for watching. Comments, questions, leave them below. Um, try and answer them as best as I can. Um, or direct you to places where you can find those answers. And uh, hopefully you learn some stuff. Hopefully you watch again and learn more stuff. And mess around with the stuff on your own time as well. Um, I would encourage you to try and, you know... Again, this is going to be in GitHub for you to download. So go grab it and throw it into an Arbitrary Maker MV project and mess around with it. And, and just see, you know, tinker with things and see what you can do with it. Um, it's the best, that's the best advice I can give to you at this point. Um, you know, go in, set up a bunch of different weapons, configure them differently, see how they operate and how they handle. Um, maybe try creating some new skill types and um, uh, utilizing those. Because uh, this should be written in such a way that the as long as the skill type and the note tag data is correct to what you're looking for the thing to be applied to, it should work because we're not hard coding in any values except for the negative one. Um, otherwise, it's just matching an ID to an ID that's coming from the plugin data from your note tag in the database and from the database data for the skill. Um, so that should be able to be just be matched because the type skill type ID there is um, set up by the <coughs> types list. Um, as it should be. Like if I go in and create a new type, because you can create skill types over here. So if I add in an extra row and I make this be like um, Marshall, I should be able to come back over to the skills and then apply that to yeah. So I can, so now what will happen is 
if I have a skill type uh, a skill type of three in the plugin, uh, uh, no take data for that weapon, then um, it'll get applied to this particular skill. If I have it set to none and we have a three on there, then it won't get applied. Or if it's negative one, it'll get applied either way. So just yeah, highly suggest you go and mess around with it and see see what what you can come up with. That's the best way to learn how these things kind of things work and get a better understanding of it. Um, and uh, I'll see you for the next plugin. And until then, this is LP Games, and I will catch you guys later.